What, what, when, when and why did you create Purism? What was the drive? What was the reason? So it's a, a lot of reasons. Uh, it has started, you know, kind of, let's say, you know, bubbling up for, for a decade as I, as I continue to go shop for new devices and I get frustrated by what's available out there. Um, I've been in the hardware and software space for a long time, a huge free software advocate. And so these things are, are concerns for me and have been for a while. Um, a big catalyst for me was uh, having kids and I have two young daughters and looking at the future of computing and where things were going mm -hmm. and you know me as an individual and I think this is a, a, the case for a lot of people uh, especially pre-kids right that you're thinking about yourself so I was willing to give up convenience mm. for my control but then looking at seeing uh, you know having kids and then looking at the peer pressures mm. devices how they're just, you know, there's no IoT device that, that is actually respects the user's rights. Uh, there's really nothing out there from phones at all. Laptops are also a concern. And what I wanted to do was actually say, you know what, I can change the future for other people, mm -hmm. not just for myself. And so that to me was where I, said, I thought, I'll open up that idea and see if, uh, if there's others that are interested. And I know that I have the drive and knowledge and ability mm -hmm. to execute in that space and have the passion toward it uh, and that's when I put out the crowdfunding campaign to see if other people would in, were interested in in uh, you know have pure, starting purism basically yeah and that worked yeah yes right very well uh, from 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 uh, after talking to you what I see is that you you focus too much on you know that the company should be ethical you know you should be doing the right thing um, but at time at, at at times you know people do make wrong choices you know as we talked sure. about with mm -hmm. Uh, do you think that, I mean, look at the airlines industry, okay, when, when you board a plane, you know it's safe because not because you trust the company. I don't even, most of the time, I don't even know it's Boeing plane or Airbus. It's actually, it's just like Android and Apple, you know, yes. Boeing or, you know, uh, Airbus. At the same time, uh, but what I do trust is that there are regulations, you know, there are laws. Do you think that, law, you know, uh, regulations can also play a big role in ensuring, like Europe, you know, GDPR is out. Yes, yeah. So what do you think about U.S.? What role I, can... Uh, so I, I think your analogy is actually fantastic because uh, it does show that I talk about these two worlds that we have, the physical world where we have centuries of physical rights and in the digital world, we don't have any. Mm -hmm. And so I do, I'm very strong believer that mm -hmm. we should have digital rights and those digital rights should be founded off of what benefits people in the society. And so these are things that uh, when I was looking at, right, should I be more of an activist, mm -hmm. right? Um, I already have been an activist for decades and it's an education process, mm -hmm. right? And what I have to do is, as an example, is I have to educate people to say, let's to take your analogy, say, no, you shouldn't fly uh, that, you know, let's say Boeing but, airplane, but yeah, right? Yeah. Instead, you should fly a different airplane. And then you would come back to me and say, yeah, but that doesn't get me from point A to point B. Right. And I say, and my activist stance would say, yes, but you're giving up your rights right, right. to participate. So the, taking the analogy of saying that, that flying and there was no regulations would actually be a, sort of this unethical approach if we apply that to that analogy. So taking that same analogy forward would be that in the digital rights world, right, we have barely anything, right? Um, so what, what has happened in Europe is a step in the right direction. Uh, but people need to be comfortable that when they just quote unquote board the plane, that they know that that the regulations are there to protect them, and mm -hmm. that's why it's one of the safest forms of travel. That's why people are comfortable in getting on, and so that same type of thing could happen with devices and the internet and digital rights. And this comes comes all the way from you know anti bullying, mm -hmm. uh, all the way through to uh, just general you having all of your privacy rights protected. As society advances mm -hmm. more and more toward, uh, you know, where our online life is going to be more than our physical life, mm -hmm. that these are going to be real concerns that, right. that need to be addressed. So what I looked at doing was uh, I'm going to both be an activist uh, as well as, well, I guess three things, activist as well as work towards lobbying to make sure that regulations can be in place and then also provide a business that can uh, create a business that has the ability for creating products that can actually solve these problems as well. 
And by doing that, then uh, I can influence, maximize my influence on the future of computing.